So, higher, and higher, exercise 10, number 9. Now, there's a diagram required this time, just so you can visualise what's happening. You don't need to do it with a diagram, but it's much easier if you just have a quick sketch. So, P, Q and R have these coordinates. P is the point 1, negative 2. What's the biggest number? There's a 14. 1, negative 2. Let's put it about there. P is the point 1, negative 2. Q is the point 6, 3. Well, that's 1, oh, 6, 3. Put 6, 3 about there. So, Q is the point 6, 3. And R is the point 9, 14. Oh, R is the point 9, 14. It says those are three vertices of the kite P, Q, R, S. So there's a point S over here somewhere. Find the corners that diagonals this kite and the point where they intersect. Right, so before you start, right, just try to start thinking, what would this diagram look like? That'll give you the relationship between the sides and oops, what you could do. Well, if it's a kite, there's going to be a third point here, a fourth point here somewhere. You know that in a kite, the diagonals cross at right angles. And the shorter diagonals, the shorter diagonal is bisected by the longer diagonal. So that other point should be round about there. That should be the point S. I don't need to draw those things, it's not asking for that. So looking for this point here. Right, well the first thing said, find the equation of the diagonals. Well the one you can get straight away is PR. You can get PR straight away because I know everything about it. I know two points on it, which means I know one point, and two points will give me the gradient. So I'll get its gradient first. The gradient of PR is going to be the difference in Y over the difference in X. Now you've got them in the diagram there. Quite often it's handy just to put them down. So if it goes PR, put it down that way. 1, negative 2, going to 9, 14. And then you can see difference in the Y coordinates. 14 take away negative 2. Take away negative, make that plus 2. 9 take away 1. So then I've got 16 over 8, which is going to be 2. So the gradient of PR is 2. Then I can pick either of the points on it to get the equation. So if I've got enough room to do it here using the former equation, y minus b equals m x minus a. I'm going to use the point 1, negative 2, I think. So I've got y take away the y coordinate, that'll be y plus 2, is 2 times x minus x coordinate x minus 1. Well, that's perfect for the form y equals m x plus c. So y is going to be 2x minus 2. Minus another 2, so minus 4. And I'll call that 1 in case I need to use it somewhere. Next part. So what about the equation of the other diagonal, S, Q? Well, it's a line. I'll need to know two things about it. I'll need to know a point on it. I've got that and its gradient. Well, the diagonals of our kite are perpendicular. That means that S, Q, I'll put a wee note, S, Q is perpendicular to PR which means that the gradient of SQ then would be the negative of the reciprocal will be negative a half. That would be the first bit. I know a point on it, 6, 3, so I can just go straight into the equation. Y minus B equals MX minus A. I'm going to use the point 6, 3. So Y minus the Y coordinate is negative a half of X minus the X coordinate. Take the two across. 2y minus 6, leave the negative for this side, is negative x plus 6. And for this one, I'll just take it all over to one side. So x plus 2y minus 12 equals 0. Give that a name. Number 2. So that's the equation of the second diagonal. The question did say, and the point of intersection, we'll call that n. So point of intersection, n. That's fit for substitution, so I'll just substitute 1 in 2. So that means I write out equation 2, but as soon as I come across y, I write this instead. 2x minus 4, carry out the substitution, minus 12 equals 0. Now it's all x's. I've got x plus 4x minus 8, minus 12 equals 0. I'll just gather them and split them. 5x, and that's be positive 20 on that side, so x is going to be 4 and then substitute x equals 4 into number 1 because that will give you y directly so 2 times 4 minus 4 so it'll just be 1 4 so y equals 4 so that's the point 4 4 so maybe I should have invented the name m it says intersection so I'll just actually write that down then intersection I'll put n because I've called it that 
four, four. There. That would be part A. Part D. Find the coordinates of the fourth vertex, S. Right. N was already found to be four, four. Well, there's no equations required to get this. This is just a direct count the boxes. Because in a kite, the longer diagonal bisects the shortened diagonal, which means however it takes, so many, however many steps it takes to get from Q to N, it'll be the same number of steps to get from N to S. And by steps, I mean useful steps, horizontal and vertical steps, steps that can just be counted. So it's just count the boxes. So I'll say this, I want to get S. Well, I would say, well, to go from Q to N, and I'll write it down that way, doesn't mean the length of QN, it means the steps it takes to go from Q to N, from 6, 3 to 4, 4, would be, well, starting at our X coordinate of 6 and going back to 4 means I'm going 2 back. And starting at 3 for the Y coordinate and arriving at 4 means I've gone 1 up. I've gone 2 back, 1 up. And those steps must be the same as the steps take needed to get from N to S. That's the same as the move that go from N to S. You go two back, one up. So S is going to be two back, one up from N. So to get S, I'll just put down N's coordinates and apply those steps to it. So from N, I'm going to go two back. So it's two off of the X coordinate and one up. So it's one onto the Y coordinate, which means S is going to be the point two, five. And that's all that's needed to find that particular one. It's just count the boxes. Not literally on the diagram, because you're not allowed to do that, but numerically.